I uh, I want to start this this podcast out by just saying something, and it's something that's like really unfortunate that for my community and for myself, if you have an issue with people's culture and their their diversity being in things and inclusivity being in things, I have no room for you in my uh, in my community, and I I, I pity you. It's really, it's really sad that in this day and age, that's something that needs to be, um, it needs to be stated. Cause yeah, it's, it's something that's really, I don't know. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. Like I said, that it's even something that has to be said and something that has to be stated. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's about it for the intro. Also, welcome back to the dead Kings podcast. Uh, I'm your host. T.S. Cosway, T. Buckets and Stuff, Taylor. I'm joined by Lazy Pool. He is on the horn. The setup is a little different this time around just because this, uh, the software that we use, it's subscription-based, and they have hiked the prices up so much monthly that I'm going to just try to figure something else out. So for the time being, I hope you bear with us. I hope everything sounds good because... I don't have a monitor. I these headphones are for me to hear uh, to hear Forest. Um, so yeah, but we're gonna hopefully everything sounds fine. Everything sounds good. Everything looks good. Uh, my webcam's gonna lag a little bit because it's just it's a whole story. But what we need to get into is the podcast episode spoiler filled for Spider Man. Across the Spider Verse, Forrest, what did you think? As a movie, I'd see it again. As a, a well, as a plot point for the whole Spider Verse thing, I'm irritated with it. Oh, you're irritated with it? Yes. Okay, and we will we will get into that in a second. For me, I'm. <sighs> I feel like, because there's there's two things we talked about on the car ride home, or one thing that we that I I got cleared up for me, um, because admittedly this with how much flashing and colors and stuff is going on in these movies, I miss a lot of stuff. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I miss, and there's a lot of stuff that um shouldn't be missed, uh, and some things that I had mis- that I had misunderstood. But for me, I I enjoyed it. I was entertained. Uh, I didn't hate it by any means. I definitely, I personally, I enjoyed it more than the first one. Um, but mainly because I'm overseeing characters' origin stories. So when I see Miles got bit by a spider and now we got to find him learning his powers and all that stuff. Like we've seen it with Andrew. We saw it with with toby we've seen it now again with with miles we saw it with miles in the ps4 game like we've seen you know however many other like comic or comics that we've seen it in and that we've seen it in uh tv shows i get it he gets bit by a spider takes him a while to learn how to be spider-man we get it um so that's why i enjoyed this one more because like we already jump into him being Spider-Man, which is obviously, I guess this one takes uh, a year and some change after the first one, which is wild because Miles bulked up big time. Um, But yeah, we're not really going to go beat by beat. We'll talk about things that, 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 uh, that, um, things that really intrigued us and things we just kind of want to talk about. Obviously the first thing for me, uh, is miles home life was a lot more. It caused a little bit more anxiety this time than any other story for me personally. Um, with him not being able to the whole struggle that I like that little sub story of him wanting to tell his parents, but being torn between, Hey, will they still love me and look at me the same? 
not even will they be in trouble or get hurt or be you know killed or whatever it was will they still love me and look at me the same way and i feel yeah. that i feel that came from gwen's stuff um because somehow at some time maybe it was a text i don't know but in the later in the movie after miles reaches or him and gwen are like they they're talking or they're hanging out whatever he says so how are you and your dad sorry excuse me i had to sneeze but so i feel that that fear was brought about by gwen and he tells her i want to tell them i they need to know and she says trust me it's better if they don't how yeah. did you feel Miles' parents would have reacted to finding out he was Spider-Man? I feel like his mom would have been chill about it, but his dad would have been worried sick. Do you think he would have been Captain Stacy style? No, not that he wanted to bring him in. Just like, you're just, you're just a, you can't be out there doing all this stuff. Yeah. Like, just being a parent. Yeah. Um, again, apologies if Force audio sounds bad or my audio skips or whatever. Again, this is a different setup um, than we're used to. Uh, anyway, on to the next. I feel uh, the spot, the development from comedic. I, I, I honestly thought the spot was going to be just a bad guy in the intro and then Gwen was going to capture him and they were going to take him off. And then the real threat of uh, him dealing with Miguel. But yeah, the, the, I thought Miguel was going to be the big, big bad of this movie. Yes. Yes. Um, his, his, the spots, his backstory was great, but there's a flaw in it, right? Let me, let me, let me actually first tell me what you thought of the spot. Scary. Continue. Just more like, to towards, towards towards the end of the movie. I mean, the beginning, I thought it was it was pretty comedic. I love watching their <clears> first <throat> fight through through Brooklyn, mm. and just how their starfish cart wheeling through the air in the background while the parents are talking with the administrator. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love seeing the starfishing through the air. But he got so much like growth and so little screen time. It's it's really good in my opinion yeah i 100 percent agree i 150 percent agree um him in the beginning again there's if you if if you want our commentary on every little thing it's a two hour and 30 minute movie i'm not gonna we're not gonna talk about every little funny line one-liner that they had these are just big things to us that stuck out uh like i said like obviously the 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 convenience store scene was pretty good miles oh yeah i love that scene miles fighting to trying to fight him off to get to his to get to his his meeting with the teacher and his parents or whatever i yo all these spider-man are better, better spider-man than me in no way home when goblin says gods don't have to choose we take i would have been like wait a second you can do that okay like let's do it but, but, Miles, I feel that if Peter were put in this position, he'd have a definitive choice. You know what I mean? He, I feel Peter, a di maybe Toby's Peter, or a different Peter, would b make a choice whether I'm going to go to college or I'm going to find something more grounded. Because he, he knows where he cares at. Miles seems like he... He doesn't care as much about school. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I can see that. It's not that he doesn't care. It's just that he can't care, I think. Or, or yeah, I like, he can't, like, like he can't... Like, Spider-Man is too important to him. Um, yeah. Because, like, he hasn't found that balance yet. And this wasn't even about... about finding the balance it was about living with things you can't change and you can't win and save everybody um yeah. as to hey you can go to this school you can go to here you can go to here 
he was kind of like, oh, uh, I got to go Bye. You know, something came up and it's like, you know, like I, I was never like, there was a time when I was rooting for miles and that was for him to tell his mom at least. Um, but so we get that, then we get the stuff with Gwen, um, and Gwen's backstory for why she's part of the spider time force voodoo dimension jumpers. What did you think of her backstory with Peter? I mean, it's always sad every time I hear it, hear about it, read about it, whatever. But having it actually put into a media outlook like this, it, it hit differently. Mm -hmm. you know, I did enjoy that the lizard isn't always the same lizard in each universe, apparently. And how Peter was like a Komodo dragon, wasn't he? Or was he that... Um, he looks like a lizard from, iguana. Like, like the thing from Rescuers back and uh, down under. Rescuers down under. Yeah, it looked like he looked like Joanna. Yeah, a little bit. But also with Gwen's backstory, which with each of the spiders that we see, we they're all animated differently for the most part, and her world is really pastel red and pink watercolors, and it's just gorgeous to me. I know you had some issues visually with it right yeah i i wasn't a fan of it i'm still not a fan of it but i recently watched some videos and read as to why they did that and i get it but i still prefer miles is the way My miles and spider-man india's and i i apologize if that's if that's wrong to call him that i've seen a ton of people call him that um the only reason is because i can't pronounce his name it's like pav -tier. i think it's pav -tier. Um, or something like that. I'm in the same boat as you. Uh, but his 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 universe and Miles' universe are my favorites. Again, like it Gwen's Gwen's universe. It it, it makes it feel like it's her own. Um, but with with Gwen's backstory, my feelings on it is that it was just it it was heartbreaking. Like Peter was her best friend, and then like she she killed him. You know what I mean? Like. Which, which to Not me... Not on purpose, but yeah, she still ended up killing she, him. She killed him. But, like, for me... And maybe this is me nitpicking. There's been times where that stuff has happened to other baddies. And then they transform back to them human cell, their human selves. Or they, they, they have their powers wear off or something. And then they don't die. Um, yeah. I mean, I get, I get what they were doing. I, I understand it. I understand hundred percent, but it was still kind of, I wasn't expecting him to die. Um, uh, and then the Renaissance vulture, I really like that. The what? The, the Renaissance vulture. Yeah. Well, so I was to see the normal vulture in the museum, but, but no, he's made out of parchment and all steampunky and really cool. Yeah. So also what's wild about that is I found out recently that uh <laughs> Spider-Man Noir's Vol or uh Uncle Ben got eaten by a Vulture. He was a freaking cannibal and and Vulture ate him alive. Oh yeah, that. So that's that's, that's pretty dark and I just recently found that out and I was like, okay, now I look at Vulture completely different now. This Vulture was pretty cool. Uh I I'm still partial. I really like Michael Keaton's Vulture. Vulture. I really, really like him. Um, this one was, for what it was, it was cool, you know. Uh, yeah. Then this brings us cool. to our introduction of Miguel um, and, then Sp and Spider-Woman. And a lot of people have, because this is Spider-Woman, Spider-Woman. This isn't a version of Spider-Woman. This is is spider woman they've changed her to be black and pregnant and the re i don't have an issue with this for the simple fact that i'm not a spider woman fan so i don't care you know what i mean like yeah, i got you. so it, it is it what it fit to me i didn't know that she wasn't uh black i it, it just fit yeah it, to me it is what it is it it it's it, it, it was what it was you know what i mean like uh, she, there were times where she kind of got on my nerves, 
but just as a character, not because of anything, like because she was black or that she was pregnant. The motorcycle thing to me was different. Um, Miguel in this one, the first thing I noticed was that like I felt like his his webs were like omega beams. So not to the point yeah, that they would always hit someone, but to the point that he just could the, direct the them when he needed to when he needed to. Yeah, That's... I don't know if they were always like that in the game Shattered Dimensions. They're just normal webs. Yeah. That's that's a change. Maybe it's that they're not Omega Beams. Maybe it's just that they're they're just illuminated. I don't know. Um it's like they're not a beam, but like for the people watching, not like a beam, but it's it's he can control where the web's going when it's already out of his wrist. Um but we get this whole thing, and I love how in the movie we see it go full circle where we see the reason as to why Miguel didn't want Gwen coming with him. Yeah. Um, I liked how that, that had a meaning behind it. The issue I had with it, we're going we're gonna to get this out there right now. So my buddy Sentinel and I were talking, and he cleared up that in a the backstory, and this is me saying this to the, to the people, in the backstory of the spot, we actually see braided hair Miles about to get bit by the spider. Miles that becomes the Prowler was supposed to become uh, was supposed to become Spider-Man in that in that universe. Well, the Spider-Man that died in Miles' universe was always supposed to be Spider-Man. But at a time, I swear Miguel said that there was not supposed to be a Spider-Man. But then I read it, I listened to, heard it wrong, and it was, now that you, there is no Spider-Man. So for some weird reason, I understood it as spy uh miles's spider-man was supposed to or he'd still be alive but then there'd somehow be no spider-man now let me roll back real quick miguel blames miles for the death of that spider-man yeah. when it wasn't miles's fault because kingpin had he not been messing with the collider that spider would have never dropped into Miles' universe. Exactly. So, so they blame Miles, but it wasn't his fault. And Miles, I'll have to go back and rewatch the movie. But I swear, Miles didn't interfere. I don't know if he like said, Spider-Man, look out when you know um Peter was fighting off Goblin and and trying to turn off the collider. I'll have to watch that scene again. Maybe I'm wrong. But the first scene, right after when he goes back to the subway, yeah, no, he didn't say anything. Yeah, so he wasn't messing with anything or doing anything. So he was just there at the wrong time. Yeah, so it was kind of just jumbled to me. I I don't I don't know. I don't rightly remember the first one. Personally, I like I, I I loved the first one. I just have a hard time watching this style of animation. For the first two times it's cool. But then it kind of wears on my eyes a little bit. Like this one, there were some times where, like, Forrest and I, we thought we were supposed to be watching it in 3D. Like, yeah. it, it had that weird effect of 3D when you didn't have your glasses on. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, I can't, I can't see what's going on. Anyway, push, moving along to some other things in this. Uh, Hobie Brown. I, this is, I, I, I know I'm in the minority here. I wasn't in love with him mainly because we couldn't bloody understand him. And I don't know yeah. if that was just because the way he was talking or because our theater, but I understood maybe three lines of dialogue from him. Same. Um, I'm going with the benefit of the doubt and just say it was the theater's fault. Once yeah. it's on like Disney plus or something, we'll have to find out for sure, but I'm just going to blame the theater at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I liked him a lot. Spider Punk is one of my favorite Spider Men. Um, I absolutely love him. I actually cosplayed him years ago. Um, 
but it's I don't know. It was it was really cool. It was really cool to see him. Now people were here's the wild thing, right? People are online like were Gwen and Hobie a thing? Okay, da 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 da. I was like, wait, did they have a thing? Because they were like mentioning does does he know about Hobie? Does he know about Hobie? Does he know about Hobie? And I'm like, why are they talking about that so much? So so much. But people on the internet are like. Hobie hit it. Hobie hit it. Hobie clapped. Hobie clapped. Da, da, da. And I'm like, you do know that these people are in high school, right? Yeah. They're they're teenagers. TikTok and the internet are wild. Um. So that's concerning. The other concerning thing is the um. What did you think of the whole, like, I feel like there was some, I don't know, like, I don't want to say unnecessary, but things where I was kind of like, okay, let's get it going. And it was the scene where Miles was bringing the cake to the party. Yeah. That could have been done a lot easier if he had been thinking, because I get what Toby would have done, in my opinion, he would just webbed to his back and just swung all the way back home. Well, exactly, and I feel it would have been a little more, a little more impactful had Miles had the cake perfect. He got in a little spat with the spot, and he gets away, or he, you know, he he gets there, but he gets there late, and they're yelling in, they're yelling at him, they're laying into him, and then they're like, "What took you so long? Why were you late?" And then Miles brings out the cake, and it says what it's supposed to say. And, you know, the dad kind of feels like a dick or whatever. But it just said, I'm, I, I knew it would come out to be a joke. Because I'm like, he's doing way too much for it to not, for it to not be messed up. Gwen uh, was there and she was tracking the spot. Now, that makes me wonder if Miles, if the spot would have stolen the money, right? Would he, would yeah. he have had that big vendetta still against Miles? Probably not to the extreme, but it's a fact that Miles said he's only, he's not even villain of the week. Yeah. That's what triggered him. And while on the subject of the spot, if, you know, we have to talk about the spot essentially was working on the collider stuff. He was working, he was hoarding all the spiders for different universes, which makes, now again, there was so much going on, so much animation, so much stuff I had to look at. Um... Excuse me. So much stuff I had to look at that I may have missed some things, but why were they were were they meant to send the spiders to universes to just create Spider-Man if they wanted to take down Spider-Man? Like I don't think that's what Kingpin was trying to do. I think he was just doing that to just to experiment around with the collider okay because it, it just because kingpin's whole thing was to get his family back well and that's the thing is that spider was supposed to, i understand that, that spider was supposed to go to the other miles universe and it went I, I don't know i'm still i'm still confused on this time travel and multiverses are not my best friend they 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 really aren't i i'm not a fan of them I understand why they did this, but I, 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 there's so much. There's You have to keep track of a lot of stuff when you're telling a story about a multiverse. If you miss one thing for me or one thing doesn't make sense, the whole ship is going down. I, I, I start, I'm like, what about this? What about this? What about this? I have to go back to the beginning. Um, anyway, let's kind of jump forward. Uh, the spot basically tells Peter or tells, tells Miles. You know, you ruined my life. You made me this way. You threw a bagel at me. Gosh, that's the best motivation ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Because uh, uh, we went with our, uh, my friend Allie. And the when Miles it thro- shows the flashback of Miles throwing the bagel at the spot. And it, like he acts like it's a gunshot when he gets hit. It's the most dramatic, funny thing ever. Oh my gosh, I loved it. Um, and then, then you sent me the telltale TikTok of that scene. 
this action will have consequences. Oh, Miles. But yeah, so... Um... So... You know, we have the stuff with Miguel. Miles is glitching. because Oh, what happens is... Gwen gets reamed about the spot. She go opens her little portal thingy. She dives into the portal. Miles doing what he does. And I love that he could he finally mastered turning invisible. I love yeah. that. Um uh, that Gwen was called to go help out with another spider's universe because the spot was there. Uh, Spider Man was... India. Yeah. And Miles and followed her. Miles snuck along. And I just so he he's voice Spider Man India is voiced by the the guy who played Dopinder in the Deadpool movies. Oh. And I, didn't I, know that. I that's why I, didn't I loved know that. him so much. After I found that out, I was like, I love Dopinder, dude. Um like honestly, after this movie, this Spider Man India is actually is one of my favorite Spider Man. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um we end up finding out that them stopping or saving uh I don't wanna I don't wanna botch his name, but Spider Man India's girlfriend's father from dying. We find out about canon events and and things that have to happen to keep the multiverse in check. Gwen I I don't maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like Gwen took no responsibility for any of this. You know what I mean? Like I feel like had she again like how how he's like she said she said i wish i had never come to see you or i should never have come to see you but like that just makes miles feel worse than anything like granted yeah. it's not wrong if she wouldn't have went and seen miles and he wouldn't have snuck around snuck along with her and nothing would have happened um now the other thing is miguel's reason for doing all this is because uh, that TikTok I sent you of the Jello. <laughs> <laughs> so Miguel essentially saw a universe where their Miguel had died and had a daughter, and he was like, "Well, I could just step in, and take over." Now, yeah. did Miguel have a daughter to begin with, or did he just see an opportunity? I honestly have no idea. He might have. That's why he wanted to replace the one that got killed maybe i again we're gonna have i'm gonna have to watch this again when it comes out on disney plus i don't we have, know a lot of i don't know a lot about miguel to be perfectly honest okay well he, he's also like a vampire too um yeah I, in uh, in what in shattered dimensions it, did, it didn't mention he was a vampire he was just Spider so is shattered dimensions a definitive canon version of miguel um, I thought it was. I assume most of the Spider-Man games were canned because the whole Spider-Verse situation, but honestly, I have no idea. Who knows? Um, anyway, there's just a lot going on with Miguel. Oscar Isaac does an amazing job betraying him. Uh, as we're talking about multiverses, we get probably my favorite cameo in a very long time. Um, and it, is it even really a cameo though? It's Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, Uncle Aaron from Tom Holland's Spider-Man universe. And, oh, like I, 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 I almost jumped out of my seat. I was so yeah, happy. He, I, he did. I love Gambino. I love Donald Glover. I love his work. I, I love, so he was one of the first original vo voices for Miles. And he actually had a cameo on in the first Spider-Verse movie where um, Uncle Aaron and, and uh, Miles are talking and you can see him on the TV down in the corner and it's him dressing up as Spider-Man in his show Community, which is pretty cool. But he's fully fledged um, Prowler, which... I don't. I, I saw behind the scenes photos of the outfit, and I don't love it. Um, but nonetheless, I'm happy. Now, does this mean we're gonna get live action Prowler? I who knows. I really hope that we get some version of a Sinister Six or something, 
against Tom yeah. Holland's Spider-Man at least. Um, <coughs> excuse me, because we have uh, Mac Gargan, who we still don't have anything of. Like there was that Scorpion wink and nod, you know, in 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 uh, Homecoming. But other than that, like, and I'm really bummed that they got rid of Mysterio so quickly. I'm really bummed about that. Um, but anyway, anyway, I'm glad to see they got Donald Glover on the mind. Um, what was your thought about all these, ca- all, all these appearances in the uh, Spidey facility? I want to see all of them. I want to go frame by frame and see what ones there are. Like, there's so many. Um, I, li- I like the Donald Glover thing. I like how it shows it's not just animated universes. Mm-hmm that are affected it's real life universes as well and mm. during the whole scene where miguel's explaining the webs the spider web thing of the dimensions that we we see andrew we see toby with their uncle ben's and it's just it was really really creative in my opinion and also during that scene i, I really like that and it comes back later in the film, coming full circle again, is we see Spider Punk just breaking stuff. I thought he was just breaking stuff to break stuff, but yeah, he was um, making the he, freaking wristband. Yeah, he was making his own anarchy wristband, pretty much. Which is which it was super cool. He must have made two because he was able to go to Gwen's dimension, drop one off, and then leave. Um, yeah, so he must have made he must have made two, and I think that was really cool. Also, we can't forget. Sorry, excuse me. We cannot forget about the best performance of any Spider-Man in this show, Scarlet Spider. Now, I'm not a fan of Andy Sandberg in the, by any stretch of the imagination. That was Andy. Yes. Oh god. But no wonder. Oh, it was so good, Scarlet Spider. Which my thing is, he has all these Spider-Man. Miguel has all these Spider-Man. Spider-Man. And not to be rude, but he chooses a pregnant woman and a melodramatic Spider-Man. I love how he was narrating himself in the alley. Going into the abandoned alley, staring at the wall. Looks like a normal wall. Looking around for mysterious things. Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really, I really liked him. There were just too many Spider-Man to cover. I, I, I'm not. I, that's not what this is about. It's just our feelings on the movie and things that happened. Yeah. Um, Miguel explains to Miles that his can he disrupted a canon event, and hopefully they can fix it and everything will be fine. Well, Miles' canon event is something that is has been on my brain since this movie dropped, and it's the inevitable death of Miles' father. Um. Because Spidey dies, is supposed to die. Miles takes over, and he's everything's good, and then boom, he loses someone. And so everybody knew what was going to happen. Gwen knew, Peter knew, Penny knew. They all knew. Being part of that society, they all knew Miles' canon event. And yeah. he was not. He he felt betrayed. He was not about it. He was not having it. Um, rightfully so, and this is where, oh man, this is, this is where, like, Symbiote Miles started coming out, because he called out, he called out, he called out old Peter Parker, and he was like, uh, Miles, like, remember, uh, Peter's like, remember what happened last time, and he's like, well, we can do it again like last time, we can run it back, because this isn't last time, and I was like, oh, snap, uh, so Miles is just like I'm just not gonna let this happen. Spider Man always, and Ben cu- or uh, Peter cuts him off and says, Spider Man doesn't always save everybody. Yeah, like he's like it doesn't it doesn't work like that. And to Miles' credit, he's like, then what's the point of doing this? If you can't at least try to save everybody, you just got to sit there and let these things happen. And he even looks at Gwen and he's like, your dad's a freaking captain. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, he took that personally, and so. But then, and that what make, that's what makes me think about Gwen's Gwen's canon event, because she comes back, 
and he quit the police force. I think Peter was her canon of event. Cause I don't know in Spider Gwen if her dad ever dies. I know Peter dies, but I don't know about her dad. So given given because essentially in Peter Peter Andrew uh, Garfield's Peter he kind of had three canon events. He lost Uncle Ben, um, Captain Stacy died, and then Gwen died too. Yeah. So he had three big events that happened. So who knows? Peter could have died. Her dad could have died. Who knows? I'm just saying, what if that was a canon event and now it's changed because he's no longer going to be a police chief like, or a captain? But yeah. who who knows? You can, like, it, it was just really murky on that because it's like, it seemed like you could change things, but it doesn't guarantee everything will be fine. And Miguel was not about to take that chance. Um, yeah. Because he personally caused the universe to get erased. Exactly. So, and honestly, had, I feel like, had Miguel not started the secret spider society, maybe none of the canon events would have been messed with. Because no one would know about canon events. I don't know, though. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, let's get to the big chase, then we'll get to the big reveal. I think the big chase is really, really cool. I like how this Miguel can't stick to walls so he uses his claws that's the that's the thing with him is that he can't climb walls so he, he though that's what his claws are for oh i thought the claws were just for show well <laughs> also to assist in climbing but yeah i was i was doing some reading and, and watching on the old ticky tacky and on the google and that's what it is is that this this miguel he can't stick to walls and can't stick to things so he, that's what his claws are for uh, okay, I'll... I can't remember if, it, if I think it's if I'm remembering correctly. He was also part of the original inspiration for Venom, which is also really cool. Anyway, um, I thought this chase was cool. I thought it was good. There was a lot of again. There was a lot of murky stuff. He goes, Miguel's like, "You're just a kid." And Miles is like, "Stop saying that." No, I'm not. I'm like Miles, you literally said you're 15 years old. Just because you're Spider-Man, not a kid. What? That's not a kid anymore, that is, Taylor. That is literally a kid. Don't be. Don't say a fifteen-year-old is not a kid. You weirdo. Anyway, I had a mortgage at fifteen. Don't talk to me. No, you fucking didn't. Anyway, <laughs> um. Anyway, it just this whole. And then oh, the the part that got me is when Gwen's like, uh, uh Miguel, this isn't what we talked about, and he looks down. And Miles like, you talked oh, about yeah. this. I would, I would have, I would, like, I'm, I wanted, to... Dave did a really good job at not make, making me not like a lot of the original spiders. After this, I was only rooting for Spider-Ham, Spider-Man Noir, Hobie, and Penny. And Spider-Man India. Spider-Man India, yes. Um, but. Peter B and Gwen? No, they're, they're not. They're not cool. Yeah, Peter B and Gwen. And then we had, uh, I can't remember her name, but she was the, I didn't really like her. She was the VR spider, spider girl. Oh. I, I can't, I can't remember her name for the life of me, but I didn't really like that she was a spider person just because she had the VR. Like, who, who knows what her story is? I kind of want to see more, so I'm not hating blindly. Um, But anyway, what did you think of the chase? I loved it. It really hit, it hurt when Peter B was talking to Miles in that like exhaust area, and then his tra his watch band goes off that they locked onto his location. Now, don't know if he was telling the truth that he didn't know that was happened, but I also get the feeling that he knew that would happen, and that's why he did it because Miles trusts him. Yeah. Um. But so the whole scene was really well animated um especially the ending where they're going on the sky train up just going up and up and up and we see just the mass of spider people just crawling over each other all over the train to get to them it's it, it reminded me of world war z to be perfectly honest mm -hmm. it, was, it was freaky uh and anyway we're, we're gonna get to uh spider machine. we're gonna we're gonna push along because we're get we're getting uh, pressed for time but the last scene, the last sequence was Miles finally just going to tell his mom 
that the the new Spider-Man, that whole plot twist. What did you think of that plot twist? I saw it. I saw it coming, but it didn't register. When we see on the computer, it was, he was being sent to Universe 42. Because mm. that's, that's what's written on the spider that bit him. But that's not his universe. Yeah. So when it was, they it, they broadcasted it so much, but still I didn't catch on to it because Miles in Universe 42, his room is pretty bland. While when Gwen was looking into Miles' bedroom in his universe, he okay, had all this stuff. Yeah, and I, from and he, what I was, I was, I was reading some backstory stuff and all that good stuff. Not backstory stuff, but like what some possible meanings is it's because he lost his dad. So he threw out all the childlike stuff because that's what him and his dad bonded over. That all, and like there's no, not really any pictures of his dad in the house. So they obviously didn't handle his dad's death very well. And they're just not coping well, um, obviously. So it's Uncle Aaron's still alive. We, we see all those teases and winks and nods. So he, him starting to know that this isn't his Miles. Um, there's a theory out there that the actual Miles texted Uncle Aaron was like, hey, I'm on my way or whatever. Now, what a theory is, is that this Miles, he's Prowler, but he's a hero. He's a vigilante because there's the Sinister Six cartel. Yeah. And so it's he's it's that um, Miles is like the Batman and Uncle Aaron's is Alfred. Um. And I think I think that's kind of cool if that's the thing, or this Prowler could be ahead of this new Sinister Six or part of the Sinister Six, and they have to, to replace it. Or yeah, and and he has to he has to 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 fight off all these people now, and it's just a whole lot of stuff. Um, I have, and here's where spoiler alert: I can't give this movie a verdict, a final verdict. Why? Because I it ends in a cliffhanger, and I can't give a cli- a, a, a final verdict to a cliffhanger. Honestly, if exactly. they would have if they would have made this movie three just a half hour longer, we could have got this wrapped up. I don't know how they explain like a, like obviously there's gonna be a big old fight. Something's going to happen. I have a feeling Peter B is going to die. Um, I feel Peter B is going to die because he'll... I, I, I don't see any way... And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm going to be wrong. But I don't see any possible way that... Um, that he walks out of this and, and Miguel's the good guy. I feel like Miguel might kill Peter B. Maybe I don't know. either Peter B or his dad's gonna die. One second. But yeah, it's it's I don't know. I'm very conflicted up above. Like the movie, I had a fun time with it up until the cliffhanger, because I feel like it wasn't a cliffhanger like Infinity War. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it almost felt we got like a it was a definitive ending in, in Infinity War war and then end game was just them fixing it yeah like i feel like i feel like it was a cliffhanger for the sake of it being a cliffhanger and dealing with the mandalorian for all these years and every episode ending on oh come on you know keep going whatever this could have yeah. been a three-hour movie it could have been oh excuse me but i don't know it it like what is the next movie going to be an hour and twenty minutes? <laughs> like, what else is there to wrap up? Because obviously we have to fight. They're going to have to fight, figure out what's going on in that universe, get back to Miles's place so he can fight the the spot. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. He's going to beat the spot. <sighs> like I, I I just don't know. I don't I don't know. Like what? Yeah. I just feel un. I feel. I feel edged you know <laughs> like like blue balled like yeah the, the second it actually started like getting intense they cut it 
And instead of it being intense and it's like, oh, boom, and like a proper, it didn't feel like a proper cliffhanger. Like, yeah, it I, felt I, like the end of a really, really long TV show. Exactly. Um, but yeah, this is a little bit different of a podcast. I apologize. We have, uh, we have Transformers, then we have Flash, and then we have Indiana Jones that we're going to be doing. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. If you like what you saw, let me know down below. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Links in bio, and I will see you all in the next one.